die. It's crazy. Warfields are madness. It starts out as uh, something that you've trained for all your life, trying to make a difference. The cool thing is, as an A-10 pilot, on times when the stars align and you're up on that mission, uh, where you get to make a difference, you get to see the reward. It's a pretty easy answer to in terms of why are we here. Number one priority is always saving guys on the ground. The people that we uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. That's my whole soul and being is that guy on the ground. Uh, you know, he could be an 18 year old guy, 18 year old kid with a rifle. That's all he's got and I'm here to protect him. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Sanitized dog tags, ID card, in the left breast pocket, ED kit, watch tape, smart pack, in-flight guides, maps, DTCs, RMMs. Uh, let's see, visor, pedal packs, water, snacks, seat cushion if you guys wanna take that. Cell phones, you got one, do you have yours? Okay, signed out. Yep. One random Friday, uh, spring of 03, so right after the, uh, uh, the Iraqi invasion, uh, three guys in flight suits walked into the bar on campus and started talking about flying. And I was a year away from graduating, not really knowing what I wanted to do in life, and this guy started talking about flying fighters and uh, being a fighter pilot, being in the Air Force, and how awesome it was, and uh, it kind of uh, hit, a, hit a nerve with me, if you will. Attack! Right. How I got interested in the A-10, uh, I can still remember it to this day. Uh, it, I was at a uh, uh, a hobby store because I like a lot of kids interested in aviation I built a lot of airplane models and this was 1979 I was in in high school and went to the hobby store and they had a Ravel model of the the for then brand new A-10 uh, it, it had only been operational for a couple of years at that point and I just saw and I remember I can still remember to this day looking at the the wall of models and just trying to pick what I was going to build next and I saw this the box and the picture and I was like what in the world is that during about the last month. I like that they're kind of going into the pilot's backstories because it's true. How do people think like, I'm going to be a fighter pilot? Like it's just such a niche and you don't, it's not a common thing. Everyone wants to be a footballer or nowadays a YouTuber or whatever it is, you know? But yeah, it's interesting, very interesting. I think a lot of it comes from if your parents, well, if any of your family member has served as well definitely has an impact i've come across even people in the uk they want to serve for their country because their uncle or their dad has served but again kinda, like you said from a child he was already interested in you know planes yeah this one the first one wasn't saying. the first one was like just a random conversation and he yeah. just got inspired from there so it's, it's unique mm. the pilot training is where you put in for what airplanes you want to fly I was torn on the F-15E or the A-10 on which oh, one I wanted to put number decisions. one on my list, you know. So luckily, uh, uh, one of the respected IPs in our flight had flown both the A-10 and the F-15E. And all he said to me was, Mitchell, what patch do I wear on my shoulder on Fridays? And the patch he always had on was the A-10. So <laughs> I ended up putting the A-10 as number one. I was a uh, first lieutenant. Uh, I was 26 years old uh, when, when Desert Storm kicked off. The 26-year-old fighter pilot caught the nation's attention a few months ago when he and a partner shot down a record number of Iraqi tanks. No way. Please never forget when you look down and realize that somebody's trying to shoot you down and you've got to, to, uh, to kill him first. My first full two years in the Air Force, it was pretty much a completely Cold War type of uh, mentality. Our training was all very low altitude. Uh, it's uh, it doesn't seem that long ago to me, but uh, I know talking to a lot of the guys now, you know, they're it, it, it's uh, been quite a while ago. And, and when you look at the airplane from then to now, it's it's pretty amazing the different upgrades and uh, that we've gone through since then. The A-10 is the only airframe ever that was built entirely for this mission. Yo, come on, man! They're about to do a gun run. You need to get down. Let's go, buddy. Come on, man. <laughs> Sound. Ow. Woo! A ten saving the day again, baby. <laughs> they love it. Wow. There's just nothing that matches uh, the devastation that that gun can uh, can bring.
Loading up. So much bullets. My Look God. Old. Hostage for the pullout. 30 mil inbound. It's an awesome testament to the, to the aircraft, I think, that the, the same gun that we used to kill main battle tanks in 1991 is the same gun where uh, we can shoot a single insurgent uh, that's fleeing on a, on a motorcycle or, uh, or uh, shooting our, at our guys from a, uh, from a tree line. Point is, you know, the A-10 was built for ground combat, okay? Ground combat has, we had the old linear battlefield type where we're gonna go fight a bunch of tanks going low at 100 feet, and then we've morphed into a medium altitude precision strike platform because the airplane has been updated and modified to be able to do that. Mm. Sensors are great. They're amazing. They, they enable precision strike. They enable us to generate coordinates that, that are pristine, that are right on the target. But that will never replace just, you know, looking right outside of my cockpit and looking at the battle space. What am I seeing out there big picture? We do have this personal connection with the people that we uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. Uh, we hear uh, him getting scared. Request immediate re attack, same remarks, same restrictions from last hit, north 75 meters. We hear him getting excited. We Here we go, that's it. Good hit, good hit, good hit. Imagine that. That is crazy in a desert like that, f shooting at like a, the opposition. I think just. This is what they train for. Yeah. The normal, the things they do for the normal civilians to live a normal life is. Of course. A massive sacrifice. Mm hmm. Dash 2, I need you in the same, same remarks, same restrictions. We hear the bullets flying. We hear him taking cover. We hear him breathing hard. Uh, and and it's, it's, it becomes a very personal, uh, a very personal mission, mm. uh, especially when, when you start hearing about guys uh, taking casualties uh, down there. You take that, that hits very, very close to home. Nobody ever wants to hear that. We care about guys on the ground. We do our mission in relationship to guys on the ground. We are support element essentially for the Army. Nearly a burst an eardrum. Wow, look at that. We care about the guy on the ground. I'm not saying air addiction mission isn't caring about the guy on the ground, but it's not tangible. You can't really grab the benefits of it right then. You're going to wait a certain amount of time to see its effects. Air to air, how's that about the guy on the ground? Well, you're building air superiority, air supremacy, correct. But is the guy on the ground going to see it, get the tangible benefits of it? No. Close air support is about the guy on the ground. Combat search and rescue is about the guy on the ground. Um, we're joint. We're a joint airframe and an air force, and that's what makes us different. Going down to sign it soon. Okay, uh, today we're going down to Sande Sufla. We've been there recently, so we've got a good lay of the land. Um, keep in mind, the spiny has been pretty hot recently and they've had some contact from the same area around Sande Sufla. Uh, he went over the recent activity. Keep in mind the uh, kind of MO we've had recently out of there. They've seen the, the Taliban commander kind of looking at the objective first, doing a quick meeting, picking up weapons en route. Usually there's motorcycles involved. Uh, you've also got the uh, Taliban commander that they uh, seeked a couple weeks ago. So you've got all that stuff going on right there in Aspandi. We're going right into the heat of that. So keep that in mind as, uh, as we get down there. Keep your eyes open and uh, stay vigilant. Hmm. All right, so our actions on contact, near and far ambush, return fire. Look to me, we'll either maneuver or we'll push through. IED, get 360 degree security and clear the danger area. And then we'll look to Kazavak. Uh, in the case of a complex attack, we're going to return fire, move out of the kill zone. Indirect fire, get down, look for uh, distance and direction from me. Our actions on halt, take a knee, face out, and uh, the march intervals that we're going to use are going to be dependent on where we are. 
uh, in the open area, spread out as much as you can. The bigger we can look and the more intimidated we can look, the uh, less likely we're gonna take contact as we move down there. I love how organized they are, but at the same time they have to be because life and death, one wrong decision or one, you know, situation happens and they don't know how to respond to it. You know, it's good that they're just clearing everything up before they get into. But this is why when we was watching how they train to be as part of the army is very intense. Yeah. And they give them like a real scenario as well. And it's good because these are the situations you're going to be and you don't know how your opponent's going to attack either. You have it's to true. be ready for everything. Could be anything, yeah. yeah. That's all I've got. What are your questions? All right, we're kidding up. 0615. 0615, kids on. Oranges, eggs. Ready to go. Got a few up and go. Yeah. Yesterday, as most days, we went out on a dismounted patrol uh, south of our fob to a village of Aspondi. Uh, basically, we got some intel that uh, some bad guys were storing weapons in a building and we had contacted them before, we'd run into them before. So we went down there to kind of check back up. And uh, as we got down into the village, um, we ran into some, some sketchy guys. It just, everything felt weird from the time we got down there. There was high tension. You could tell by the, the NA's body language. He was antsy, pacing back and forth. Second that happened, we we know we spread out, let the the PL do his link up. Uh, it was just high tension. I felt from from the get go. Let's see if they find anything. He said everybody is a teacher here, so we are good people. Okay, if they're blah, 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 good people, they have nothing to worry about. Yeah. We're not going to take Yeah, I told them, but... Uh, just a lot of a lot of uh, sketchy reports. No one had uh, the same same story. Everyone, they were all family. They all lived in the same compound, but no one's story matched up. Unfortunately, we weren't able to detain them. Um, so as we started to uh, to RTB to head back to the base, um, we got word that the Taliban were maneuvering on us from the south. Whoa. They got, uh, must have got a report. Back uh, through Esponde, uh, towards uh, Ghazni. Mutant enter, we go. If I could get you uh, overhead of our uh, lead element uh, through a spondy, if uh, at all possible. As we were headed back to the base, we had to cross about two kilometers of open desert. We were That's definitely so risky. In a, a huge open danger area. That's sitting ducks mm -hmm. in that kind of space. We got about 500 meters outside of the village and started taking uh, some pretty accurate fire. No way. That was mad. Send it. Oh, 
shoot it! Damn, kind of. Wow. There was no cover. I mean, there were people trying to find tire tracks to hide, to get a little bit of a defilade behind. Uh, you know, in, in that position, the best you can do is spread out, gain fire superiority, you know, and then wait for, for some air support. Our comms were a bit of an issue at the time, and so they had a little bit of a struggle, uh, but they did have uh, A-10s luckily being pushed down to Here us. Here we go. I have your position south of the tree line. We were quickly responded and uh, working with the JFO on the ground and, and uh, one of my JTACs were able to get Hog on, on station quite quickly. We were taking some harassing fire at that point. Right here. Hey man, I'm busy, but I need full security, brother. Who's like, shooting? Bro. Somebody's fucking shooting at us still. Uh, but luckily we had uh, the A-10s on station to uh, come in and do a nice show of force, which is always a, uh, a clincher for the enemy because they know what that entails. <laughs> Once the A-10 comes, it's serious. There it is. There it is. Damn. It's quick as well, isn't it? The A-10 has proven itself time and again as being um, really a nightmare to the enemy. Just its mere presence alone is enough to, get, uh, to keep the enemy at bay. And, uh, and in that situation right there, uh, again, just bringing those guys in quick and fast um, uh, was enough to push, uh, push the enemy uh, away from our forces. The ground troops that I work with, uh, when they think close air support, they think A-10s. And I think the reason for that is uh, they almost share the same mentality. Um, if you were to say that there's a grunt in the sky, it'd be a hog pilot. <laughs> what hog? That was cool. They're very user friendly. I mean, any one of these dudes could pick up the radio if I get shot in the face and, uh, you know, employ. Those guys are really professional, very well trained. And if, uh, you know, you have a random Joe who doesn't know what to do, those, those guys can pull it from them. It makes sense now why the troops on the ground are so, like, they love the A-10. They love that team. Because it's their support. I didn't. Re I knew they were supporting them because it mentioned it in another video, but I didn't realize it was to that level. Mm. They literally just call it in, boom, it's there. Like, mm. it's such a good tool for them. Yeah. This must have saved so many of their lives. 100%. Yeah. To win a war, you need boots on the ground. And to have boots on the ground, you need support. And you need the right kind of support to have boots on the ground. And it's the A-10, honestly. Even sometimes just a sound. Or just telling the ground commander, hey, A-10's on its way, or we have aircraft supporting that we hear in five mics. And you ask what it is, you say, hey, we've got an A-10 coming on. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it picks them up a little bit. That sound <laughs> is so distinguishable. I love that, it's like a fart. <laughs> It's like a it massive fire, but an aggressive one. It is amazing. Uh, you hear it first when it fires, and then you hear it echo from the gun in the sky. It, it, that sound right there just drives 11 Bravos nuts. It's amazing. Die. Hey, thanks, sir. I just shit my pants. <laughs> It's that sound of... They're just glad it's on their side. Yeah. I'll tell you that from now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> corny like freedom, but it, it really is. It's just, it's the sound of don't mess with me. It, <laughs> it scares off everyone and shows you you're in good hands. The A-10 Warthog. We were obviously fans from our previous videos, but it's actually nice to see the relationship that it has with the ground troops, I did not know it was to that level. I thought it was just like, they would help when needed, but no, they were primarily focused to support the ground force. They're ready, yeah. they're on call. They are. Second the call comes Which in. Which I think is great because anything can happen at any time. Yeah. And the fact that you have access to the A-10 and they could just come straight away, they're so fast as well. Got trained, the guy so flying. so much bullets on the plane. Little bo the bombs as yeah. well. Like. 
Like those guys there in that video, they were in that open desert. They were screwed. Mm -hmm. They didn't have access to that A10. They probably would have all died there. Or like they would have to outpower the Taliban, but just with their guns, which is very hard to do when they... The thing is the opposition has guns as well. So it's and they're in cover. Yeah. The opposition were in buildings. These are all... The street. They're got nothing. in the open. One good shot, you're, you're yeah. getting shot. That you could do a good shot, but... They could like, hide behind cover and you miss. Mm. Guys, thank you for recommending the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Big up the A10 for now. Peace out. Bye.